Welcome everybody to another episode of Shot in the Dark. I am your host, John Cena Evil here. Let's get right down to it. First off, I just want to say I went to my first wrestling show this past weekend in Philadelphia, the old ECW Arena, 2300 Arena for MLW's Battle Riot 3. It was my first show since Elimination Chamber, uh, which was also in Philadelphia back in the beginning of uh, 2020, so it feels like forever. Uh, fun show, I have to admit. It's just great to be around a lot of fans. Um, you can see the excitement. You can see the wrestlers get emotional. Um, a lot of cool surprises. I know the new LAX debut, which is a pretty cool surprise. Some title changes. Uh, don't want to spoil too much because I will be covering these MLW shows once they start airing, uh, whether it be on Vice TV or YouTube. Still not sure what's going on with the MLW's, um, TV rights. Um, but stay tuned. I will for sure cover those when I get to it. But let's go to AW Dark Elevation. This was taped, uh, looks like before and after this past Dynamite's episode from Miami. So we did have a crowd here for all these matches. Thunder Rosa defeated Dream Girl Ellie, Ellie making her first AW match since November of 2020. Uh, Matt Hardy defeated Fuego Do Sol with the leech. Before the match, Matt Hardy was with the Hardy family office cutting a promo. Um, just picking on Fuego and just talking down to him. Rio defeated Amber Nova with a double stomp from the top rope. Dustin Rose and Lee Johnson cut a promo about uh, pretty much Dustin just hyping up Johnson for his match against Jungle Boy later on. Powerhouse Hobbs defeated Baron Black in mere seconds with the Spine Buster. Yuka Sakazaki making her return to AW stateside, that is, since February 2020, defeating Kylan King with the Magical Girl Splash. So obviously a lot of these names are names that we heard on Dark before. So I'm not sure if it's just because they're in Miami and they're able to bring them with them, or if they're just going to, you know, tag along. We'll see. But names that are going to be there, Varsity Blondes, who are newly signed, teamed up with the Gun Club to defeat the Acclaimed and Chaos Project. Um, Max Caster's freestyle was pretty much saying that Colton's so ugly, Billy should have wore a Trojan, and he made fun of Miami Heat for being swept. Pillman gets to pin on Luther after a flying clothesline after the match. The Acclaimed put out a challenge to the Varsity Blondes for a chance to, ri- to rise up the rankings before getting chased out the ring, so I'm pretty sure we'll be seeing that tag team match soon. Brian Cage defeated Allen Five Angels easily with the Drill Claw. Uh, Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus cut a quick promo where Jungle Boy says that after being the first to get to 50 wins, he's looking for more records to break. Layla Hirsch defeated Kelsey Heather, making her debut. Uh, Layla wins in about a minute with a cross arm breaker. Uh, Heather, interesting note here, she appeared on both Monday Night Raw and AW Dark Elevation because she's been featured recently as one of Bobby Lashley's ladies. Um, so we'll see where she goes now that she was officially let go from that duty from Lashley. Scorpio Sky defeated Captain Sean Dean with the TKO pretty easily. Ethan Page was on commentary hyping up the coffin match with Darby Allen that he's going to be having. Mark Sterling with Jade Cargill, they're backstage, they have this video where they're pretty much saying that because of a clause in a contract, Jade is allowed to do anything related to modeling, films, TV, uh, amongst other opportunities, so it looks like Jade's going to take a little break uh, from wrestling to go tour Hollywood and dominate the Jade brand, and she says that the peasants here were, were blessed for way too long, and she is needed elsewhere. Ty Conti defeated the debuting La Brava with the, t- with the TKO. Jungle Boy defeated Lee Johnson. A uh, couple back and forth roll up attempts. Nice competitive match here. Uh, Lee Johnson looks great in defeat, but Jungle Boy does get the win. Red Velvet defeated Layla Gray with this devastating looking chef's kiss kick to the face. Uh, check it out. Backstage, George Joel says that he has accepted Matt Hardy's offer to join the Hardy family office, and we go to that right now as Chuck Taylor, Orange Cassidy, and Wheeler Utah, who looks like he's subbing in for Trent Beretta for the time being, defeated Private Party and George Joel. Uh, Joel, he comes out looking conflicted. Um, he's even wearing a Milwaukee Bucks jersey that they said Matt Hardy instructed him to wear. Uh, Utah gets to pin on Joel after Joel does have a couple issues working together with Private Party, so it looks like that is the story going forward. Hika Rushida defeated Julia Hart by submission with what she calls the full metal muffler. And in the main event, Darby Allen defeated Angelico with the coffin drop. A really good main event here. Uh, Sting was ringside by Darby. The crowd was fully behind Darby. And then after the match, Matt Hardy and the family office tried to attack Sting and Darby, but Christian Cage ran out for the save. And then Ethan Page and Scorpio Sky came out to have a stare down with Darby, hyping up the coffin match. And then Sting got on the mic and says that, AEW wins again, and Darby says that it was a pleasure to close the coffin on. It'll it'll be a pleasure to close the coffin on Ethan Page. AEW Dark. So this is um, Tuesday's show, which actually shot in Daly's place uh, with no crowd, just a regular AEW roster ringside. So I'm not sure if this was taped back when they were still at Daly's place, or if they're going to be going back and forth to Daly's place to shoot Dark. Um, still not sure, but there was 18 matches here, so let's get to it. Matt Hardy defeated Jossie with the Leech. Uh, Jossie has appeared in GCW as frontman Ja, and after the match, George Joel was at ringside, and he comes in to kind of like uh, help Matt Hardy, you know, towel him down and whatnot. 
continuing this um, gimmick of pretty much being just like a servant to the family office. Brian Cage defeated Fox Vineyard, making his debut. Uh, easily with the drill call, Vineyard has wrestled at Ring of Honor and Northeast Wrestling. The Acclaim defeated Derek Pizzatoro and Roman Rozell. Uh, Caster's freestyle was all military themed, as that's a gimmick for Pizzatoro and Rozell. Bowens gets the pin after the mic drop on him. Diamante defeated Harlow O'Hara uh, by submission with a half straight jacket. Uh, before the match, Diamante cut a promo, pretty much calling Big Swole, calling her out for a match. And uh, O'Hara has been wrestling on Shine Wrestling recently. Ethan Page defeated Ryan Mantell, very quick with the Eagle's Edge. Big Swole defeated Sahara Seven by submission with the Clearwater Clover Leaf. Uh, Seven is another wrestler from Shine Wrestling, so nice to see them using a lot of this female talent that's usually down in Florida for these shows anyway. And then after the match, Swole told Diamante that maybe she should she should become all the lead before talking crap about her and keep her name out her mouth before her foot goes her up her ass. Dante Martin defeated Ricky Shane Page. Yes, you heard that right. Going here as uh, RSP with a flipping stunner. And I'm surprised. I mean, you might have heard of Ricky Shane Page. He's been wrestling forever as a pretty much a deathmatch wrestler. He's in, He just um, was the GCW champion, losing to um, Nick Gage recently. Um, so, yeah, pretty interesting to see him on here. Not sure if it's going to be a recurring thing, but... Uh, yeah, interesting <laughs> to see Ricky Shane Page here. Evil Uno and Stu Grayson defeated Papadon and Sean Maluda. Papadon making his debut, a staple in the Indies for over 20 years. Um, Maluda's first appearance since January, and Uno gets the pin on Papadon after a pile driver running punt combo. Ryan Nemeth defeated Marcus Cross with a neckbreaker that he now calls the Hook of Love. Penelope Ford defeated Robin Renegade with the Guthbuster. Buster. Uh, Matt Hardy cuts a quick promo on Christian Cage ahead of their match and says that they've actually only had two singles matches in their careers, and Hardy has won both of them. Frankie Kazarian defeated Austin Green uh, with a cross-faced chicken wing. Green is this pretty big guy uh, coming out of Nightmare Factory. He actually has a, had a manager at ringside with the name of Diamond Sheik. Lee Johnson and Brock Anderson defeated Mark Davidson, making his debut, and Aaron Fryer. Brock gets the pin on Fryer after hitting his trademark Anderson spine buster. Julie Hart defeated Matty Rinkowski with a split leg drop. This is Matty's first match in a, in a while. The Blade defeated Jake Tucker in over a minute with a doctor bomb. Private Party defeated Dion Roosman and Joe Isa, making his debut. Isa uh, has wrestled on Monday Night Raw before, having a match against Buddy Murphy. Powerhouse Hobbs defeated Travis Titan in seconds with the Spine Buster. I mean, a mere six seconds. Gun Club defeated Caesar Bononi and JD Drake. Uh, Colton gets the pin on Bononi after Cole 45, and a pretty good tag team match here. And in the main event, and Helico defeated Wheeler Utah with the Navarro Death Roll, about eight minutes here. Uh, really good match here. I'm happy to see Wheeler Utah, and it was just announced that he's going to be having a match on Dynamite against Sammy Guevara. So I feel like it's only a matter of time before Wheeler Utah might be all elite. NWA Power had a special Power Surge episode. This is pretty much dedicated to the life of uh, Joseph Hudson, a.k.a. Josephus, a.k.a. the question mark. So they did kind of base it around the match that he had uh, against David Arquette and Tim Storm back at the pop-up clash low where uh, Josephus Jofisa, lost his hair. But there was a couple other matches on here as well. Marche Rocky defeated Jeremiah Plunkett and Jordan Clearwater defeated Papa Jive and Rush Freeman in the triple threat match. NXT UK, Kenny Williams defeated Nathan Fraser with the bad luck. Uh, the story being here with that Fraser's left leg got injured throughout the match, costing him the match. Joe Coffey and Rampage Brown enter Sis Gala's office to discuss something, but they kick, they kick the cameraman out of there. They show a video hyping up Michael Sotomara versus a, a male, which is coming up soon. Uh, Mark Andrews defeated Lewis Howley, How, uh, Howley making his first singles match in NXT UK. Uh, Sam Stoker tried to interfere, but Danny Luna and Flash Morgan Webster come out for the save. Andrews hits the fault piece shooting star press for the win. Um, so now Subculture earns himself a tag team title shot against Pretty Deadly. Jack Stars is seen at the PC, pretty much looking upset that he lost a Heritage Cat uh, Cup match against Tyler Bate, but Dave Mastiff comes in, giving him a couple words of encouragement. Tyler Bate then says if Mark Coffey wants a title shot, all he had to do was ask for it last week. Blair Davenport, the former Bia Prisley, making her debut, her debut here, uh, defeating Laura DiMatteo. A nice quick debut. She wins with this deadly looking knee to the face. After the match, she actually gets to the mic and says that all the other women's wrestlers here are out, now on notice, and none of them have ever seen someone who wrestles like her. We see a video of Ginny hyping up her upcoming match with Eva Valkyrie. Uh, we also see a video of Tioman sitting with Rohan Raja, where Raja thanks Tioman for helping him and treating him like family, and next time they will take out Ash Ashton Smith and Oliver Carter. And Raja says that he will be forever loyal to Tioman. They confirmed that Walter versus Ia Dragon will face off on July 22nd. But before that, they'll have an in-ring press conference on the next episode of NXT UK. In the main event, Trent Seven defeated Eddie Dennis with the Burning Hammer. And then after the match, he gets attacked by T-Bone and Primate of Symbiosis. But Tyler Bate comes out for the save with a pair of nunchucks. 
205 Live, we get a couple of new faces here as Josh Briggs defeated Asher Hale with the Lariat. You might remember Josh Briggs. He actually was the last Evolve champion. Uh, been signed for WWE for a while, but it's the first time he's making his match. Obviously, he's going to be in the breakout tournament, so this is a way to showcase him. These were not qualified matches, they said, just a way to kind of show you some new faces here. And Odyssey Jones, another guy who's been in the PZ for a while, defeated Grayson Waller with a big slam for the win. I see big things for Odyssey Jones. Just something about him uh, really stands out. New Japan Pro Wrestling Strong, this is a Road to the Tag Team Turbulence show, with Baron Brown defeated DKC with a schoolboy by pulling on the tights. Uh, PJ Black defeated Alex Coughlin with the Black Diamond, and in the main event, really good main event here, uh, about 10 plus minutes, Josh Alexander defeated Rocky Romero with the Divine Intervention. After the match, uh, Alexander put out a warning to anybody in New Japan Pro Wrestling, whether it be here stateside or overseas. Ring of Honor had an episode, this was pretty much right before their Best in the World pay-per-view, so nothing really here of significance, but the Briscoes did defeat Dante Caballero and Joe Keys as they start from the bottom to raise back up in the tag team rankings. Flip Gordon defeated PJ Black by submission with the STF, a really good match here as both of these guys have similar styles, and Dragon Lee and Kenny Kane defeated Brody King and Tony Deppin and Jay Lethal and Jonathan Gresham in a triple threat tag team match here with Kenny King pinning Gresham uh, after Tony Deppin took him out with the Shining Wizard. I did not get a chance to see the Best in the World pay-per-view just yet uh, this weekend as I was uh, a little tied up going to these shows, um, but I do plan to check it out. I heard really good things about it, and uh, interesting that Chelsea Green is there now as she was probably one of the rumored names to face Deanna Perrazzo at Slammiversary this coming Saturday, um, but I have really good things to... Um, Look forward to here in Ring of Honor with the women's division and also MLW. I forgot to mention they actually started using a lot of the women um, from Sea Stars. Uh, Willow Nightingale was there as well. Brittany Blake. So good to see MLW get a women's division as well. On main event, Veer uh, had another match here, this time defeating Jeff Hardy and Angel Garza defeated Shelta Benjamin. The network editions of the week, another episode of ICW Fight Club and WXW We Love Wrestling number 12. Um, that's it for this week. Uh, you guys can actually catch me this Saturday with Davey Portman having a watch along and post show for Slammiversary. Uh, this is their big show of the year. Um, the main event being Kenny Omega versus Sammy Callahan in a no disqualification match for the Impact Championship, as well as plenty of surprises as we've been accustomed to on Slammiversary here after the WWE releases. That is it for me. You guys can catch me next week for another episode of Shot in the Dark.